Good evening, Final Fantasy Randomizer fans, and welcome to week six of the Duckling Boot Camp. My name's Jat. I'm joined here in the booth by Dead Pulse. Our tracker tonight is going to be Danny3883, and our restreamer tonight, as always, is going to be Dark Moon EX. Dead Pulse, how are you doing tonight? Oh, wonderful. Excited for some Boot Camp week six action. Absolutely. I am doubly excited as I am the last minute stand in runner tonight as well. So if you want to see me try and calm with a 10 second delay, well, you ne didn't know you wanted it, but you're getting it nonetheless. Um, week six, a couple different emphases here, but we're going back to no loose. You know, one week of loose, we've said enough, we've got our experience there. Going back to no loose with the first introduction of forced classes that aren't like forced black belts. So that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on. And one of the classes in particular that's forced is very interesting. It's a very underutilized class. Will Bloodworth's favorite. If you played the extra credit week one, you'll have known all about this, but welcome to the forced thief. So Dark Moon showing the various flags, but we'll start from the top again, just quickly running through them. But those are kind of the highlights. Those are the emphases. Um, so, so yeah, so nothing too much on the first page. No, one thing to always check, starting inventory. Nope. No starting tens. Womp womp. Enemies, once again, nothing too special, but once again, all these difficulty levers, we're starting to turn them up a little bit. R not everything is unruttable, so we're, you know, we have shuffled and B-side trap tiles as well, so definitely some nastiness possible out there. Okay, moving on to the next tab. Um, go. This is kind of a mixture of Spring 2021 and Spring 2022. So we have the free bridge and the free canoe, but note that there's no free canal here. This is going to be really important um, in a second. So let's keep that in mind as we go into incentives. And here we go. This is the callback to Spring 2020. You'll note right off the bat, um, ship and canal, both guaranteed to be loose in the inner sea. So what do you think about that, Dead Pulse? Well, this means that we're going to be checking a lot of chests early, and we might even have to go to Marsh. Yes, we might have to go to Marsh, which has no incentive item. We might need to go to Volcano, which has no, it doesn't have an incentivized location, but the ship and the canal both guaranteed to be loose but guaranteed to be loose in the inner sea so you know for those of you who are like oh goodness loose items not all over again well there's only so many chests they can really be in like if we don't get the key early you have marsh you have temple of fiends you have um matoya ice volcano right and and that's pretty much it so the key opens up a few more lo locations, but just keep that in mind that there's pretty limited subset and it's going to make Ice Cave extremely valuable to go early because we have a free canoe. It's available from the beginning. And it has all those boxes in the inner sea that could have the um, ship or the canal. Do you want to go over the rest of the incentives and items, Dead Pulse? Um, sure. So we added a couple of things. The Mass Immune, the Defense, and the Power Gauntlet are going to be three more items that are incentivized here. Uh, and just taking a look over at the left, we have two random dungeon locations. So Ice Cave is going to have its placement random as well as Sky Palace. So this means that it can be uh, anywhere in Mirage, anywhere in Sky. All the rest of the locations are going to be uh, the Titan's Trove we brought back, and Ordeals, uh, as well as Canary Lock, are all going to be in its standard locations. Mm -hmm. And moving over to items, we have bumped up a lot of difficulty sliders. The one thing we haven't bumped up, though, is the incentive goodies. So we have very nice Masa Defense Power Gauntlet, and that's really just to make sure that you can... Um, Th that you can basically win with a thief <laughs> without having to open up every box in the game because that's a pretty good uh, set of stuff for the thief although health still could be a concern and yes rich pointing out correctly ice can have multiple items so you have to make sure you're checking all the chests unless you already have a way out of the inner sea okay goal nothing changed 
maps. Critically, check always. Early open progression, Northern Docks is on, so that floater in sky, a possibility. And scale, this is the other place that we've bumped up the difficulty a little bit here. EXP and gold boost all the ways down to 2.1 plus 150. Overworld and dungeon encounter rate up to 0.7.87. And um, blurst weapons and armor still pretty solid. The other thing that you guys might not be as familiar with is that the boss stats are 50 to 200% rather than like, you know, the 50 to 150 with the clamped HP or various things like that. So there's quite a bit of range on these bosses, but they may be punching a little bit harder than you're used to. And also, um, we're not quite at the stage where like lock is absolutely required, but um, lock is going to be a good idea to pick up because if you have a chaos that rolls 200% evasion, it's not going to be super fun. Okay, and the last two screens are going to be party and classes. So party, as mentioned, we have two forced classes. We have one which is a forced thief and another which is a forced anything that's not a nun. And then you get to pick two. So this is kind of like simulating a draft, except you know you're drafting against Will Bloodworth. Um, yeah, anything you want to say about this, like how you should approach with two forced deadpools? Um, I think uh, let's head over to the next tab and that's going to determine a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, as you can see, we have two bonuses on and no malices. So uh, you want to take a look at what the thief has for the bonuses. Uh, they can have spellcasting bonuses, uh, and that's pretty much going to determine what my party is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Ble Blessing's going to be super important here. And, you know, we've upped difficulty, but we've also given some pretty nice stuff with those blessings. Uh, convenience is the only one that you really... Well, convenience is not too much to worry about, but the key one here, bug fixes half black belt crit nerf always pay attention to it and then the other one which is not nothing is a 30 elemental type damage bonus which is substantial yeah and uh that's pretty much it for our flag overview so make sure you write down the incentive locations and figure out the party and with that um our runner jat is gonna start taking a look at these uh blessings and i'm gonna close the stream off Oh, so the Thief has 20 Agility and Night Spells, uh, so that means, well, it's Night Spells, so pretty much we're going to be uh, learning magic right off the bat. Uh, and when we promote, we can still learn the uh, Black Magic Spells for those as well. The Black Mage is running really fast. The Fighter has instant access to the Vorpal as well as plus 7 luck. Yeah, the runner is really contemplating um, if he wants to run a second melee or not. Um, I think they're going to. I'm not saying that this kind of screams Fighter Thief, Red Mage, Black Mage, but... Uh... But it kind of screams Fighter Thief, Red Mage, Black Mage. Yeah. Um, oh, wait. Never mind, I forgot the fourth slot's also forced. Um, hmm. I guess we are running two melees, whether we want to or not. Yeah, so I we guess... We literally just read the flags and both forgot that. <laughs> so... Okay, so my... Yeah, so my mage is really good at, at running. Or my, my black belt... My black mage is really, really good at running. Um, red mage doesn't really have anything special. Um, I guess Thor... Nah, I'm not even going to bother writing that down. Um, but the black belt... Pretty solid black belt. Actually going to be a pretty good tank in the early game, and then I'm probably going to down it off. The EXP is not really where I want it to be, and like I might run the Thief, especially considering we have the Incentive Moss and stuff, but like if I find a good grind early, um, maybe I just end up 3-manning. And like this is also a pretty good 3-person comp with um, Black Belt, Red Mage, Black Mage, because the Black Mage can run, so yeah. I think uh, this is what we're going to go with. What do you think, Dead Pulse? Is this what you would, the party you would select? Yeah, I like that you have at least three different options. Uh, when you said if you find a grind early, you could just go down to Black Belt Red Mage or Black Belt Red Mage Black Mage. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't find that grind early, the black belt will still probably be up to level 21, and that's not terrible for a for a secondary damage dealer slash mm -hmm. tank. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to have night spells on the thief as well as all the white that the red mage can learn. So you're probably going to have something good there. Yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, so with this, um, I guess we will get started. So here we go. Oops. Huh. Okay. No. Yeah, so unfortunately this <clears throat> that would have been All this nice. white magic isn't so great. But a couple casts of uh, Ice 3 as well as Saber, that's going to be learnable by the uh, by the thief, so that's nice. Sorry, my controller is, has been having some issues, so there may be some random inputs. So I'm buying a, a cabin here, and the reason for that is because I am going to full clear Toph. And with the encounter rate the way it is, and limited spell charges, I want to make sure that I can um, that I can save outside. Jeez, ladies. Yeah, whenever I'm checking chests uh, in Temple of Fiends, or I know that I'm going to right away, I always love buying a save item right away. Yeah, there's a pretty fast encounter, and then there's a long run after one. Well, long enough run after one for me to be pretty happy with, considering the encounter rate. Oh, it's a very long run after one. Holy smokes, what is this? And future us is seeing that long run. Yeah, once again, please ignore all the the miss inputs. My controller really likes to press right when no one's watching. I could, jeez Louise, I could um, save or have reset, but I actually want to keep um, the flame armor for to sell for early money. I mean, unknown item. Ah, uh, yes. So, do you want to take Hate's question in chat there, uh, Dead Pulse? Oh, right. I'm looking for it. So, not really a question, but... Um... Oh, about uh, not checking chests if you yes. don't have a save item. Uh, with loose, that's really dangerous to do, especially because if the ship is literally the first chest you check, you could end up clearing literally half the game. I mean, it's certainly a gamble if, um, if you want to take it. The better strategy would be, if you don't have a save item, to go in and at least check the chests if you wipe, no big deal, you just run back. Um, and if it is something that's worth your time, then, you know, buy a save item. I, you know, maybe you're losing 30, 40 seconds off of it. So, oh, I was debating checking Matoya first, but I have enough gold. Um, so I'm just gonna go to, uh, go to Provoka first and then decide. I'm not sure if I want to dive Marsh to Elfland, because, like, to try and basically end up in Ice Cave first, like, last or first that's kind of the question it really depends on my level two magic so i do want to yeah. check Manoia before i leave here though for sure it's just uh, i guess i could have hit it on the way i don't know i mean if, you, if you've ever watched any of the spring tournament 2020 you'll notice that a lot of people will if they had the ship uh they will do provoca and then go and immediately check matoya's for that loose canal mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so don't forget, if you don't have the crystal, even if you don't have the crystal, like, those three chests could be something that you need. Yeah. So no need to save um, before fighting the pirates. They're not going to kill me. Um, that's not a helpful item. I think with the herb, I'm likely going to go to Elfland and maybe just clear Marsh on the way. Oh, okay. No, I really want to go to Elfland and clear Marsh on the way. 
Uh, but that's gonna be annoying. Wow, okay. Well, we could do the world tour if you don't. Ooh, I found the crown for uh, reasonably cheap. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking about, but I can't quite afford it. Ooh, that's a really nice slot for life, and it is too. All right, sorry, you guys are still in the in the future. Um, um, we saw those life spells. And this is I, what we're looking for. We're looking for nuke. We're looking for war. Having warp at level two Oops. might change our plan a little bit. Yeah, it's making me really strong. I'm really strongly considering uh, ice cave right now. I th think I can get through it. I mean, it's going to be a little risky, but I'm going to hit Matoya. See if I get money. If I don't, um, I'm, uh, it's ice is really risky, but it seems like the payoff is just like waiting for me there. <laughs> It is all about comfort. Um, if you have played something similar to these four, and you know uh, you have a black mage that and a thief that are essentially going to be running most of the time, uh, if you're comfortable with it, I say go for it. Yeah, let's see what we have here. Oh, okay, we're not leaving that behind. Ah, oh, god. No, I'm gonna baby out. Oh, that was supposed to be a save, but I guess it's not. So happening. that was a ribbon that you found. Yeah. <laughs> now I really want to go to Ice Cave. I know. <sighs> We're gonna do it. Wait, this is not a coward stream. Oh yeah, did you ever sell the flame armor? I did. Unfortunately. I may have spent too much money on heal pots and stuff, which made me so I can't afford that crown, but I'm not too... I don't think there is such a thing as spend too much money on healing pots. Yeah, I'm not too uh, worried about it. So at this point, do you think that you're going to go to Ice Cave directly, or are you going to stop down into Crescent Lake, see what the item is there? We're, we're going straight to Ice Cave. We're going to try this. Uh, it's a little bit risky, but I think my spells are... I mean, Ice 3 is not perfect, of course, but like my spells are in pretty good shape. It depends on the unrunnable encounters, things like that. I can check those three chests pretty quick. I can see what the incentive item is. Um, so... Yeah, we're, we're gonna go. Th this black belt having all that extra HP is also making a bit of a difference on my decision. Oops, I'm gonna have to burn one. Is, excuse me, also making a little bit of a difference on my decision, and also the fact that I have a ribbon and a chain plus three on my red mage, who's a life caster. So, yeah, I, I think the gear, the stuff is like just good enough. I thought you were level five or six, which means I think you got three casts of level two magic on that red mage, which... Uh, I think it's only two on the red mage, but I think it's three on the black mage. But I will have to double... That's the only thing that makes me nervous, oh, no. because if three, that's three. your... Yeah, it's, if it's that's three, your three. life caster, and that shares a spot with warp, as well as nuke. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go with that. <sighs> So these unrunnables are kind of bad, but if I wipe here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn this encounter on the floor before. Keeping this thief up is actually pretty important, as it's essentially free life casts. Yeah, once that red mage runs out of level two charges, I would not be surprised if you switch the ribbon over to the thief, put it in the back row. Uh, I think the ribbon will, yeah, I mean, it could end up on the thief. It could also end up on this black mage, which is actually shockingly important to my ice dive. Um, okay, one unrunnable so far, which is pretty good because spell charges are at a premium here. Um, these B-side traps are also a little bit scary.
black shirt's really nice. Oh, sorry, I'm still in the future. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> That's a good tile, but we aren't here for that. And you didn't even mention the katana? The katana's not important. <laughs> yeah, no, the katana's I think pretty it's important. Katana's pretty important. I could have ran there, or I warped there, but I value my nuke charges too highly. Yeah, one of the things that I love to do is on this specific trap tile, you can just warp back uh, and take the other trap tile. So you get your choice, uh, which one with airs, uh, they're a little scary, but uh, I think Jet's analysis is correct. The spell charges are more worth it than, than that little extra safety. Oops. Ugh. <laughs> Continuing on with the scariest ice dive. Welcome to Spell Conservation Land. Ooh, that's really nice. Oh, that's also really nice. We like all of this stuff, uh, actually. So the race are the only things that we've seen on Rumble so far. <laughs> a gold bracelet and a second ribbon. <sighs> all you never icers out there, be warned. Yeah, I'm pretty close to item go mode with a katana. I, I mean, I, I need the tail, but like, I don't really need to open that many more boxes. Now, those uh, that iron gold tile that you found is pretty, pretty yeah. nice. If I had nuke charges to spare, I would absolutely burn them, but I'm on Operation Get Out of Ice Alive. That's a full-time job. Uh, no, that's not right. Okay, you know what? I disagreed with my past decision. And the Pro Ring is nice, uh, but they were sold for, what, 4500 Pro Ring? Yeah, they're dirt cheap. I, I really want to emphasize just how important it is um, that I have two characters who are excellent at running for this dive. Um, it really makes a big difference uh, in this dive safety. And, you know, this being Thieves Week, you know, I really want to emphasize the importance of running. Yeah, I mean, at any given time, one ambush and it's over. Oh my goodness, now my A button's sticking. <laughs> I really need to get a new controller. I'm not saying I was rooting for you to get wiped in ice over and over again. No, of course I'm not. not. Why, would, why would you ever say that? But that was a very good looking uh, ice cave dive that was yeah. done extremely early and paid lots off horribly. From it. Yeah. <laughs> well, not. I wouldn't say lots of profit, but okay. That's a little fortunate. So. Hate, yes, I'm thinking it very, very loudly. So that someone in Canada can hear me. Just because we're Canadian doesn't mean we have bad ears, okay? So now we have the ruby, which we can't get to yet. Uh, we're going to check out the item in Crescent Lake and then probably go turn in the herb, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be doing a, like lots of walking, but it's kind of whatever. I don't know if I routed this as efficiently as possible, but the it, the, the problem is that the crown's in Provoca. <laughs> that's, that's what the problem is. But...
But in all honesty, it might not be a bad idea to go to go back to Provoca, grab the crown, come back and do a volcano. I'm debating do the, the first uh, do armory. I'm debating first exactly one. that. I'm I'm not sure if I want to do marsh or not. That's my my issue. Okay, I'm not a fan of any of this. For... No, we're gonna go turn it the herb. We're just gonna do this in two loops, if need be. Cardio. That's rule number one. And please note that Jan is taking the what I call the path less traveled. Uh, but now he doesn't have to deal with all those disgusting fish-like creatures um, on his way. Those hydras were pretty mean. Yep, they punch real hard. Yeah, that's not really what I'm looking for. And the herb turns into our power gauntlet. Worst. Lit three, that makes the canals a little more. Uh... Oh, and Fade rolls into slot two, which means that nobody gets the shrink ray. I don't need to check this. There we go. So at this point, we're still missing the ship and the canal, which are both loops. I think that's what makes this flag set a little unique, is that you get put in these decision choices, because there's probably three different decisions you can make right now, and I can't prove any one of them would be the wrong decision. Because you can either go to Marsh Cave and hope that one of the incentives is there, or you can go to Provoca and then head and turn in the crowd, see if you can pull the floater, or you can head over to a volcano and see that with the biggest chest density, I would say, and, and try to find the key item. Yeah, so my decision is walking suboptimal, but I think it's chest opening optimal, so I'm gonna go do, I'm gonna go get the crown, I'm gonna come back, gonna check dwarves and then I'm gonna go to um, marsh and then I'm gonna dive volcano last just to kind of I like that because in your head you're probably going well if I've got six nuke charges I could probably take out carry yes exactly Although carry is a little scary, I might actually... I, I made a pretty bad mistake in one of my earlier matchups. Uh, I should probably... What's it called? Uh, bring up my black belt as a... Punching bag for carry. I also usually do encounter manipulation by music, so my encounter manipulation isn't quite as accurate as it is normally, as I don't have the sound on. I think it's showcasing it brilliantly, figuring out that your second run is very long. You're going to be using that every time you enter a place. Oh yeah, some interesting inner sea navigation. I would say that the ice play didn't really pay off, although it could have been huge if it was like, you know, a key or a second item, tons of chests. There was lots of good things that could have happened from that ice cave play, just unfortunately none of them really did. Um, we I say it's a riveting success because the, the chances of you going in there, wiping a bunch, and still not finding anything was very high. That's true, but... <laughs> But we didn't, so you know, we got to go with results oriented. No, no, no. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely true. And you did get that ribbon, right? Okay, crown. Give me a floater. Uh, 
I want to see what chat thinks, where we're going to find the floater. I'm saying it's an ordeals because that's where it always is. So I'm purposely not warping out of there because I want to save my warp charges from Marsh. And with the cube, that's kind of nice because now we don't have to gamble on going to a mirage to find the cube. True. Yeah, I'm agreeing with hate. I think floater's probably in sky. <laughs> it's feeling very sky floatery. Money Mark Springs from a point of waterfall. I would find that interesting. Ooh, okay, you know what? We learned a lesson. Shadows have thunder. That's not cool. Yeah, I, I made a small mistake. I should have um, soft reset, but I instinctually press hard reset because my brain is on encounter manipulation hard reset this seed. Um, but that leads to me taking a ton of time just walking. <laughs> For those not familiar, um, if Jat would have just walked back in uh, his normal way, he would have hit the same exact encounter. Um, and obviously wants to avoid that because nobody likes Thunder Shadows. Hey, Cloth plus two, I don't knock that. I did it again. <laughs> I'm very disappointed in myself. So yeah, we're resetting out because uh, we want to save our magic charges. We still only have six casts of warp, and we're going to need three to get out of Marsh Bottom. And it shares a level with Nuke. And life. And life. You know, leave it to us to complain about getting Nuke, Warp, and life. Oh, it's all at the same level. This is bogus. No, this is a great seed for me. I love I love everything about this, other than all the inner sea navigation, which I've done slightly suboptimally. An argument could be made for keeping that opal armor. Um, but at the same time, we know that pro ranks are 40 some, four, what, 4,600 some gold. We know that gold bracelets are 20,000, so we're not going to need that much gold. Yeah, I also have already bought the shop item, which is like the major thing that would uh, make a big difference. Oops. Wait, what? Oh, I and, just and there's the gold right there. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I am gonna exit out with this. Um, oh, this was a mistake. Oh, dear. Don't get punished. So, unfortunately, uh, we were not able to find a key out of the marsh. So, Volcano has everything. All I had to do was die Volcano second, I guess. But... I mean, there's still a chance that, uh, you know, Volcano has the key. It can't, because it's not incentivized. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was thinking that too, but I'm guaranteed to not have to go back into Marsh, which is good. That's music to my ears. Um, hate, yeah, hate's asking that exact question. So, um, Hate's asking, um, if you yes. find the key in the inner sea, could you find the ship canal in Marsh Lock? And the answer is yes. <laughs> That's another reason I was wanting to do um, the crown turn in before I did the Marsh Dive. Uh, yeah, so Clementitus is saying it's not incentivized, which is true, but we're dealing with true loose items here. 
I, I should have just taken the uh, river system, but my brain was turned off. Because I'm not even stopping in Crescent Lake. Yeah, this, that's definitely a note to self moment is going to be, oh, I don't have the key. Maybe I should think about not doing Marsh right now if I still have other incentive things that I can do. So I very um, purposely picked up a house. So the plan here is to go clear the armory and then get some levels and then warp out, use a house, and then go kill Carrie. Because of that, I am going to check this spike, which looks pretty good. Frost Anson looks like they're allergic to Nuka here. Lots of things are allergic to Nuka. You know, a counterpoint that I'll bring up about the carry dive, I know that I brought it up, but at the same time, once you get the floater, you're going to be back in the area, so it won't be that out of the way to uh, to go beat carry. Yeah, I mean, if I find both the, like, the canal and the, the ship in these first two chests, or like in, in the armory, then uh, that's going to make me want to peace out a little bit more. Uh, JLo is correct. Oops, that's a little unfortunate. Um, the canal does have to be here in Volcano Submarine, so does the ship. So yeah, now is a good time as any to talk about the, I mean, just go into a quick recap of the chests that the ship and canal can be in. So you have, uh, we're not including any lock chests right now. We have these three that are in Temple of Fiends right away. We have the three in Matoyas. Uh, we have the two in Dwarves Cave. Like, don't forget about those that are free, easy access chests. Which I did check. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but that is where somebody like myself, uh, back in the early days of my Final Fantasy randomizer career, uh, would get caught up on something like that. Like, oh, why, I, I've checked every chest. Well, hold on, you haven't checked the toys. Yep, don't forget to check my choice, don't forget to check, um... But, yeah, don't forget to check my toys, don't forget to... Yeah, forget to check dwarves. Seeing the Aegis shield feels a little bad. Hey... We did a thing. And personally, the way that Jab has routed this, I love. Um, oh, and we find the ship right there. Yeah, so the reason I decided to do it this way is because I was I was really prioritizing getting some levels on my <clears throat> on my characters. Um, and I wanted to take that trap a few times. So uh, the levels are for carry, not for, like, getting through Volcano safely. Oh, oh god. Mm. Oops. That's foreboding. Uh, it's just... No, it's making my brain... My brain's too small today. Okay, they have a billion HP. I feel less bad. Yeah, we found a little sandwich station. Yeah, sandwiches with, like, 400 health, though. So, Clem do you want to take Clementitus' question? Because, yeah, th there's a little bit of confusion around random chest and dungeon versus... Um... Oh, yeah, so if you have um, in if you have uh, incentive item that's in a random dungeon location, so it's locked to a specific dungeon, um, Marsh Cave is an exception where it won't be in the locked chests. Um, but it's always locked to that dungeon. When you have a true loose, um, it it can literally be anywhere as long as it's not locked by itself. Or in Topher. 
or or in Topher, that's correct. So, you know, 232, 234 chests that it can be in. So, to directly answer the question, there is not a flag that specifically prohibits it, those loose, true loose items, from being in, like, locked marsh camp. But if it were in a specific dungeon, you can modify those so it's before gating, behind gating, etc. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, they can. They they can definitely be in those. Uh, Hayes' question was if they can be in the Temple of Fiends locked, any loose items. Uh, and the answer is emphatically yes. They can't be in Temple of Fiends revisited proper. That would be the, the two chests right before the, uh, the loot plates, as well as the carry chests, as well as the vanilla massacre. Yeah. So for this volcano routing, don't watch what I'm doing. Listen to what I'm saying. Um, you want to go always straight up through the doors. That's kind of the heuristics for a volcano. That's going to minimize your steps. So all the things to the left and right. Oh, that's that's a duplicated chest. So I'll yes, show you. Coming up here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you go over to the five pack, and then this solo chest by itself is linked to the top left chest over in the the five pack, I believe. I don't know which one it's linked to, but it's linked. Therefore, you need to check it. I always feel a little sad when I open that chest and there's nothing in it. Well, we did find the canal, so... We were correct in our assumption that it had to be here because it literally couldn't be anywhere else. Also, I take back my prior misgivings about spending all my money on heal pots. I'm very thankful I spent all my money on heal pots. I was okay. I have two life casters with ribbons and things. Um, so for, so for Sabertail, is there an easy mnemonic to remember Link's chest? So Marsh, there's not really an easy way to remember Link's chest. The best way to remember Link chests in Marsh is just to memorize the exact step route because you're always going to step it the same way. Um, in Volcano, everything on Carrie's floor is linked except for the red dragon chest, which is to the left. And in, what's it called? in on the on the agama floor it, it's the one on the far right that you just don't have to open um or deals the chest I, I guess the short answer is there's no mnemonic you just <laughs> memorize it i don't know dead pulse do you have a better answer than that well if there is i haven't figured it out because i traditionally might just blow through it and open the chest anyways Mm -hmm. Marsh Cave, I've gotten a lot better, and that's just from remembering, you know, the lightning bolt to uh, hit the second row first column chest, then the 2-2 uh, two -two chest, then the 3-2 three -two chest row column, then the 3-3 three -three chest, and then head up to the 1-4 uh, chest. And if you can follow that, you get a gold star. Okay, so I did want to show something here, which I think is pretty a good teachable moment. So. What I'm doing here is I'm hard resetting on the C, and I'm doing this on purpose uh, because I want to check the C for a hard, for if the first encounter exists in the C or not. Because remember, the encounter rate on the C is lower than it is on land. And you, as you can see here, I sailed quite far off a power cycle. You can tell it's a power cycle because I go back to the blue screen. I can sail very far here without hitting an encounter versus if I was on land, I hit it right away. So, yeah, so just some some good information to pick up here. Um, yeah, okay, to what I was doing.
But basically what I'm saying is when you're learning encounter manipulation, make sure you check it separately on the sea as the land. You're gonna get the same encounters. Um, it's gonna be in the same spots, but the sea might skip some. Is basically the way it works. Uh, Clementitus, the crown turned into the power gauntlet. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank goodness, we have fast. That is promotion locked to the black maid. I'm sorry, Danny, our tracker, uh, always correct. Ignore me. The crown was the cube, and the herb was the power gauntlet. I always get uh, Astos and the Prince mixed up. They're both royalty. So having the ruby, this is almost a no-brainer check to, uh, because Titan Strobe is incentivized, so getting two key items, hoping for that floater, uh, probably the best decision. Yeah, and the plan was to go stop an Elfland on the way to Ordeals, on the way back, because I need items, but um, of course that's no longer a concern. Well, I still am going to do it, but I'm going to be able to do it much more easily. So we found the ruby in Ice Cave, uh, which led to the floater. I believe that bumps up the big brain play nature of diving that at level six, because if you did Volcano before that, found the ship in the canal, you might have been tempted to just leave. Oh, people were saying, don't forget it's Titan. So that's always the way that I route um, that area. If I have warp, I'll always check um, whatever. Uh, Sarda first, because warp is slightly faster to go that way than it is um, the other way. Because the reason is because the amount of steps to the intersection from the right side of the tunnel is longer than from the left, so you're better off warping to the left side entrance instead of the right side entrance. I have my encounter conditions. Yeah, in the end, it's going to save, uh, you know. Six steps. to ten seconds, depending on. It's this the type of thing that I just autopilot in, not because it like saves a ton of time, but just because there's no reason to do the it the other way. You know what? If that makes sense, like it's just like a free optimization. Always after you get the floater, check Sarda if you haven't already checked Sarda, but I had, so. And then again, making a great play, having the bottle and already translated the slab. We are just headed to check those two locations. Mm -hmm. Sar saying to the sky, but I don't think I quite want to do sky yet. That helps. Um, hey, that's it. That's exactly it. Any time that you can use warp to get yourself out of really any place, that's just going to save time. And if you do it, you know, five, six times, that can save you a whole minute. So we find the mass mutant that was at the bottom of the lake. That's really nice at this stage of the game where uh, I didn't actually check your levels, Chad. Are you hanging around at level 10 ish? If a little higher than that, like, I'm in the, like, mid, early, mid-teens, yeah. Ooh. Well, you also found a hard reset, uh, sandworm that has a lot of health. However, we do have a mass man. True. I don't really need levels right now. Um, my plan is still to go clear ordeals next. Um, I don't really want to full clear sky. Um, I could go to waterfall, which is also kind of tempting, but I want to do ordeals first for levels before I dive C, which I can clear. Um... 
I was actually kind of hoping for the tail, because I really want to go back to the northern continent to pick up pro rings and buy fast, but it's just not happening, so... I also want to buy heals, which I also can't currently do. Well, best case, you head to more deals, you find the key there, and then you can That's buy, true. head back. Yeah, I, I'm basically looking for an excuse to go back to the northern continent. Um, and when I do so, I'm going to clear Earth Cave as well. Oops. Um, so since you dan the Black Belt, are you going to be upgrading your Thief and Black Mage? And the answer is absolutely. This is Thief Week. We'll do Thief Strats. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, promotion is absolutely on the table like, as soon as we get the tail, and specifically because the Black Belt is only going to be used as kind of a meat shield in bosses, and probably not even all the bosses, depending on how many life gas we have, and especially because that shares a spell slot with Nuke. Mm -hmm. And our wind condition does not rely on the Black Belt, so all of those things combined means that as soon as we find the tail, it's Promotion City. Yeah, gross. Come on, be kind. Thank you. I have to take my Wayback Machine, but we did find Temper. That was also slot five, uh, level 5, slot 1, correct? Yes, that's correct. Temper was level 5 alongside So that was Red Mage learnable. Correct. My Red Mage currently has it. You see, that's kind of nice, because if you get a couple of those charges, you can have every battle where your Black Mage uh, cast fast, your red mage cast temper on your thief, and you can just do a swingy swing. I'm, oops, that's not what I meant to do, but I guess... I'm kind of regretting selling the flame armor a little bit, but it's okay. I could use some better n ninja armor, but it's not the worst thing. Well, I mean, it still rolled down minus two, yeah, and you great. need... Oh. If it were worth more money, I guess I would I would say, heck yes, sell it, but... Know what? Problem. Problem solved. Oops, that's not... I guess we'll take an oval bracelet, that's fine. Yeah. Hey, look, I have an excuse. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, Clementine is saying I don't need flame armor. I have an open bracelet and a ribbon. Yeah, now I uh, now I definitely don't need flame armor. But it was definitely something that was on my want wish list, I guess. So some oh I don't have to cast. So something that's on my mind right now is this steadily diminishing returns of warp and the necessity of my thief to get some levels. So I'm very strongly considering going down to a two-man after I do Waterfall. Um, because I really do need my, my thief to get some levels. Uh, I'm faster to go down here. Kraken's a little scary though, so... Unfortunately, I lost the stream in the broadcast booth. Oh, okay. So currently... <laughs> so I'm going to be 20 or 30 seconds behind you. Uh, Clementine is asking what level... Oh, wait, what did I just get? Oh, I got the chime. Okay. Um, Clementine is asking what level do I want my thief to be? It's mostly going to be an HP thing. Um, I actually don't remember off the top of my head the uh, massive breakpoint on the thief, but... What I'm really looking for is uh, just like a, a, above 400 HP at least. 
is kind of the starting point I'm aiming for here. And the assumption is that when you go down to a two man, it's just going to be a thief and a red mage. The red right. mage is going to be able to learn fast. And fast is only level five regardless, so it's not that big of a deal. Like my black belt, my black mage is already decent, um, decently leveled. I want a few more houses too. I also wouldn't say no to just soloing with the thief on those sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. If I need some level, some like emergency levels, the top right area of the desert has, um, oops, has uh, what's it called? Has sandwiches. So. That's definitely a possibility. But for uh, the I'm... most part, your thief is going to hit 400 HP around at 26, 27 ish. Yeah, L late 20s is what I'm looking at. Oh my goodness. Controller disasters continue. So I've decided to do this over Sky. I'm one item from go mode. Um, so I don't really want to full clear Sky if I don't have to. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say I'm pretty sure it's 28. So that checks out what I was, what, what was on my, what was in my brain. Oops, that was a misclick. So what would be going through my head right now is that we still have the defense sword, which is one of the incentive items, and that could be in Sky. True. Um, the key leads to two items as well, though. And I don't... Promotion is not an absolute necessity here. It's definitely nice. Um, but I could get by without it. Because I don't think this, need, this party needs fast to win. Uh, with, with life, you know... If I get the defense sword, then I probably don't need the tail, and if I get the tail, I probably don't need the defense sword, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I also have two invis casters, which is something that something that um, is often underrated, because people often are just running, like, you know, fighter red-black or something like that. But I'll equip the ice sword. If I didn't promote, I would definitely want to either do a quick grind on the thief to yep. make sure I hit, you know, the level 28 breakpoint. Yes, that uh, it's an absolute necessity to make sure I hit that. And it does make me a little sad that we're not going to have Saber. Yes. Oh, no, well, we have the Power Gauntlet, so Saber's not oh, really that. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. We're getting everything we want. Uh, I don't even need to open the boxes. There's there's nothing. So we did find our tail. So I assume that you're going to dive C before promoting. Yes. There's so an interesting thing about spell casting bonuses, which might not be intuitive, is that spell casting bonuses mean that you don't um, really need to like worry about your promotion timing for your melee classes, because like my ninja has been gaining spell charges because of the night spells, if that makes sense. That's one of my favorite benefits of the spell casting bonus is you don't have to hold off leveling up your melee characters past 15 if you want those delicious spell charges because they already have them. Exactly. Uh, so this Kraken fight, a little interesting. It's not safe for sure, but I don't know why I'm opening these books. But it does, it's definitely doable. Um, so the idea here is I'm going to try and sack my Black Mage and then go full Invis strats. 
Um, speed and power just isn't reliable here um, with the levels I'm at and with the uh, boss scaling where it is. Clementinus uh, asked, will you go out of your way to put Nuke on your ninja? The answer is probably no, because we want those casts as life. So we would never use a nuke if we didn't absolutely have to. Yeah, basically nuke will, for the bosses that I care about, so there's one situation where having nuke is nice, which is if you're down to a solo thief and, you know, you get ambushed or something like that. Or not ambushed, but like you have a big pack. But for the most part, swinging the moss is going to be better than casting nuke. So, and running away is going to be better than both. Correct. There are unrunnables though. So, I'm sure we won't run into any of those. No, 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 never. So what I like is that you've taken down to a three-man party pretty much right away. And we're already level 19, even though this this EXP scaling is, is a 2.1. So that's still a very impressive level. Yeah, this yeah. this is a very impressive level. Uh, and you really didn't have to go out of your way for it. Nope. Yeah, my, my, my fight selection has been pretty particular, um, but I think I've done a pretty good job of balancing balancing it for like my ideal levels and everything so uh, like to recap if you weren't people weren't paying attention uh especially in volcano jat was taking the giants and the, the iguana fights because those are pretty exp rich for the levels that you're at as well as a decent amount of gold uh we're definitely taking gersharks and big eyes in here and any single characters like this we can easily swing and uh, try to run with the black mage Good job, Kraken. So yeah, I do like the Invis 2 strats coming in here because our goal is to survive long enough to be almost invincible. Also, bringing up the Black Belt, pretty good here. I actually kind of want my Black Mage to go down because I want a two-man after this fight, but it might not happen. You were a little too evasion me at this point. It's okay, Sky will take care of my Black Mage pretty quick here. Uh, so with Invis 2, it raises the party's evasion by 40. And in theory, if you have six casts of Invis 2 on your party, that makes them so that you will only be, you know, if they hit, it's a one in 200 of chance. Yeah, I only went to five, but five is pretty good for the with the levels I'm at. And the math behind that is that six casts is 240, and the max you can get is 255. So I don't care if you're wearing four things of steel armor, you're you're going to be evasion cap there. Please excuse my... So my brain was saying I need to buy fast, but I skipped a step. I didn't see if you uh, saved beforehand, but one thing that that will get me from time to time is when I do this exact route, um, I forget to use a house and yep. I run out of warp charges. Before. Yep. So I talked to the I, 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 I talked to Bahamut that. and I did not. I purposely saved, but for that exact reason, I was like, I need to use a house to make sure I have warp. It's one of those things. As soon as it happens to you, like it's probably not going to happen to you again. Mm -hmm.
so are we kind of convinced right now that Sky has to have the key, which is going to yes, turn into it has, the defense sword? It has key or key adjacent, yes. Like adamant or uh, TNT. Ah, this is stupid. So you'll see, I, I make a decision to move my ninja back. I still want my black mage to die, but nothing in here is going to kill it even if I like unequip everything. So I'd rather have the ninja up front for the ambush bonus. Like this. Get paid off. <laughs> There's a reasonable chance that uh, if something in Sky or Tiamat herself is going to take out your black mage, so. Yeah, yeah. It may be worth uh, thinking about finding an Anklio off a hard reset just to get the kill before you enter in the sky because you're going to be checking a lot of chests. You might want to take a couple battles in there. Yeah, I'm going to check. Um, I'm going to check Sky One and see if it dies off what, like whatever the first encounter is. You know, the hard reset one. See what that is. Um, and then, yeah, if that fails, go check the various zones. This party's great. It's so good at running. It makes such a difference on this higher encounter rate. I'm always so spoiled when I when I bring a thief because I'm like, oh yeah, this is what it's like to be able to run. Something that's not talked about a lot is when when you're doing an overworld grind or you're looking at the a very short run of the first encounter, it's definitely a viable strategy to use that to try to grind in uh, Mirage Tower. Uh, if you can get a group of vampires and you have Fire 2, Fire 3, or uh, you can also get uh, Nightmares over in Waterfall. Yeah, I think actually that strategy becomes more apparent when you play Entrance Floor Shuffle, which is what we're going to be doing next week. So definitely a very 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 important tool in the toolbox is like popping into a dungeon and grinding the dungeon floor yeah well well while i kind of finish things off here uh to temple of fiends is going to be a little sketchy but um does anyone have any other questions or anything they want to be you know want us to discuss or talk about um i'd say overall i played the seed okay other than like horrible miss um, inputs, but the big thing is I think my inner sea navigation was... I don't know if it was perfect, though. It was definitely a tough inner sea, right? <laughs> like, there was stuff all over the place. Yeah, it was always going to look like a, a jumbled mess, but at the same time, every every decision that you made had a clear point to it. So I can call it a success. <laughs> And these seeds will run a little bit longer, um, just because of the higher encounter rates. So do keep that in mind. Hey, look, it's an Ankilo. Please try again. I'm sorry, I'm like 10 minutes into the future. Oh. Oops. Yeah, another thing, when you kill a character off by unequipping all their gear, I always like to re-equip it as soon as they die, just so you don't have to have that mental, um, like, that thing to remember for later. I try and, like, limit my, my mental load as much as possible. So things like that can help. And also, just to re-emphasize, if you need to kill off a character, I love using Anklios, especially you know, if you have the floater. Uh, you can get there, just a good quick first encounter, Anklio. It'll usually kill something right away. Yeah, what a garbage enemy, except for killing off things. Uh, 
next week is going to be entrance floor. I'm not a big fan of just entrance. So. I just I did just realize another problem with this is I I didn't get warp on my red mage, which is actually a little unfortunate for Sky. You kind of like warp in Sky. I really do need the levels on these characters, so I think it's this, it's an ex oops, that's not what I meant to cast. Uh, I think it's an acceptable trade-off. So, against the fight that you're about to see in a second, I should have cast Ice 3 on the Chimeras because they're weak to it, or just swung with both characters. Both options would be fine. Instead, I did the worst of all Or options. put on that delicious Ice Sword on this floor. <laughs> True. As far as your warp uh, analysis goes, I I assume that the the hope could be that you take. Uh, there's a lot of battles that are strong together. If you find a lot of good battles, get up to 25, 26, uh, you might be able to just bring back your uh, black mage. Mm, yeah. Or or you could find the adamant on greater than less than four. Or I could do that and not run. Okay, jeez. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of debating, like, just, ah, uh, no, I'm not going to do it. This, if, if the Sandworms weren't so freely available, I would have debated, um, like, just taking some extra fights in, um, on Sky 2, but we just have Sandworms off the power cycle, and we have two really strong melee classes, so, um, yeah. This Red Mage has fighter strength, I think. Oh, who can remember? That was weeks ago. <laughs> the other option would be to spend a couple of seconds. Maybe you can pull a T-Rex off of a different in a quad encounter. Yeah, there's only two places I haven't checked, um, so I can check them pretty quick. And the only reason I say that is because those sandworms did have a lot of health. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that if you're going to be two manning uh, to do this, I don't know if you can kill both of them in one round. Yeah. Which is quite annoying. And, or I could just get a war mech. Not that I've, I haven't seen that yet. I'm just saying that would also be a thing that's not the worst thing in the world here. Oh yeah, that would. Although nuke would be, nuke would be terrifying because you know that's the exact problem I'm trying to solve <laughs> is having some HP. Um, so. personal preference on these. I'm never a fan of these century fights. Uh, yeah, no, I would generally avoid them as well, but I'm just trying to keep, like, put every last bit of EXP onto this party that I possibly can. It's less terrible when you're swinging a katana and mass immune. Yeah, 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 for sure. You don't really want to be, like, nuking those, though. They're just, like, not a very, uh effective technique. Oh, shoot. Whatever. That's fine. <laughs> Let's see. I meant to cast um, the power gauntlet on my ninja first turn to avoid exactly what's happening, but it, I misclicked, so... So there is a decision that's going to be coming up when you turn in 
of the adamant. If that turns into the key, then you know that the key turns into the TNT, which turns into the defense sword. Do you spend the minute that it's going to take to go through that to get the defense sword, or would you not? Uh, I think I will. Just because uh, I don't love the safety of this party. And the defense sword makes things a lot better with um, a life casting melee. Well, so let's let's give an actual example of what I would do. Because it's adamant or crystal or TNT, like one chain guaranteed in the inner sea, I'll do it. If it was slab or bottle, I probably wouldn't though. Depending on who I'm racing, of course, as well. Let's say you're doing a multi-race, like the upcoming Duck Derby. Um, in that case, I would follow what I just said, where I would do it if it's in the inner sea and I would skip it if it's slab or bottle. Because I just think that's like the uh, the the play. I want one more level on my ninja. Yeah, the worst thing that can happen is wiping deep in Topher. It's just six, at least six, seven minutes lost. If you spend you know half that time getting the defense sword, it's pretty much hedging your bets. Hey, now, we did if, it. if the defense sword was by itself. Like the last thing that you needed, and it was somewhere loose in sky. Uh, I don't know if I'd, I'd go hunting for it. Okay, this time's not actually that terrible. I, I've, I was feeling kind of slow, but it's looking okay. I guess the fact that we don't actually have like real loose items helps quite a bit. TNT, yes. <laughs> Let's go. I guess we're all going to be paying hate off. I mean, that's, that's nice and convenient. That solves most of our problems. And I just want to point out that Jack resisted the urge to check those seven chests. Oh, yeah. I already opened too many boxes, to be honest. Like, I opened a couple extra in C that I shouldn't have. I was a little bit undisciplined with some of my box opening. Not Not too bad, but, like... I mean, you can't really ask for much more when you have um, three ribbons and the defense is incentivized, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's party town right there. I know I go back and forth a little bit there. Sometimes when I have a second encounter that's really long and a first one that's really short, I will not burn it off, but I will take the encounter in Temple of Fiends before mm -hmm. I hit the uh, the orb. As in Temple of Fiends itself rather than Temple of Fiends Revisited. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I do it so that because like when I'm on that muscle memory, I want to make sure if I die back, I'm on the same one. But what you're saying also makes sense. Okay, so let's talk Fiend strategy with ninjas. Um, they do a lot of damage, which is good. They don't survive a lot of non-elemental AoEs, which is bad. Um, it has life, but basically it's going to greatly prefer speed and power over uh, more defensive strats. So I'm basically going to be speed and powering everything except for um, Chaos and Tia. Tia, I'm going to go slightly defensive 
like just a defense like turn one defense while i cast fast and temper but everything else is just going to be uh speedy gonzalez i did not check but i think you're that was level 27 on the red mage so that means you have five charges of level five or is it only four um let me check i think it's five uh yeah it's five Oh, it's liches. I know it's a little behind, but I love the use of Lit 3 and the Black Shirt. Yeah. Um, spell, I'm very much a spell conservation type of player, so... You know, I will burn the spells when I need to, but not before. Especially because my level 2 slot is very crowded. It's another reason why invis strats aren't going to be super great, just because I have very limited casts of it. With life and nuke sharing the same level. Are you guys a pro at chip damage? Question from Clementitas. I love chip damage. Um, am... It has its uses. Um, there are times when you don't deal with it, and most of the time that's on chaos, uh, because you're looking for the big hits, and yeah, sometimes, you know, that extra 20 damage is going to count, but not enough for me to waste the two seconds per character action to use it. But on something like Lich, uh, you know that two swings are going to take it down, maybe one if you're lucky, so I don't, I don't mind casting Lit 3 to do, you know, 50 damage there in the hopes that it saves a turn. Yeah, like, would I rather be casting White Shirt with my Black Belt? Absolutely. But the Black Belt has nothing else to do, so... Except take punches like a champ. Except take punches like a champ, that's true. Level 8, shooting for the star. Please stop. Please stop. What is this? Everything's fine. <laughs> the Black Belt is the Zoidberg of this party, just happy to be included. Over. Why are you being like this? Yeah, this floor is uh, the sea floor, not screwing around. No. A silver oh, no. with ninja parties is uh, oh, no. <laughs> you don't need as many healing potions to bring them to full. Bad things are happening. Oh no. Oh no. Um Hmm. I am so far behind. I see. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> uh, uh, we don't talk about the unseeable evil that just occurred.
so that was that was pretty neat. <laughs> you know, don't give up because uh, you you still pull it off and you've recovered. That was insanely lucky, though. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That I don't think well, my it, it was a I don't, I don't think my plan was bad, but things went wrong. <laughs> Well, getting nucleared and then nuke with a, a max roll on your, your ninja. Yeah. That was unlucky. So, you know, the universe just kind of fixed itself there. I wouldn't really say Kraken 2 did Kraken 2 things. Kraken 2 did Fiend refight things. Oh. Okay. You're going to be like that, eh? I just got the black belt getting destroyed. Do not blame you for heading back to defensive strategies. I think this kind of perfectly sums up what is going through my head as I'm doing a a thief comp is that I don't expect all of my light warriors to to wit to live every battle. to spare feeling fine yeah that's also where the um oops that's also where the um like careful resource conservation really comes in i was uh, so yeah actually tetron makes a really good point i was really seriously debating uh casting invis 2 turn one with my knight ninja which is why i decided to cast life on the red mage instead but in hindsight that was a mistake i should have um used my ninja's last spell charge because my ninja is just going to be defense, defense, swing, 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 swing. Rude. Test swing. Yep. Don't do it. was a chaos fight. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, so what what should we uh take a Yeah, so I mean I, I know this is a little bit different of a duckling boot camp than we have uh normally as, you know, with with me running instead of commentating it was perhaps a little bit less discussional though Dead Pulse provided excellent um 
kind of thought patterns around it. Um, I guess we should ask the runner what they thought of the seed. And I mean, I mean, overall, I, I actually, you know, what, instead of asking me, why don't we ask you? What did you think of the seed dead pulse? <laughs> you know, I thought I thought it was a very nice showcase of you know what you could have done is gone the quote unquote safe route, and that's grind up that thief to like, you know the forties. Uh, and just try to blaze through. But that would have cost, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Instead, mm -hmm. you realized, all right, I need to get to about level 27, 28. I could probably survive the nukes. That should give me enough damage. And guess what? This Topher, the last three bosses were not forgiving, and you still made it through. And that mm -hmm. was because of the correct decisions that you made at the grind stage, as well as the spell conversation, uh, spell conversations, conversation. Con you saved enough spells to make it happen. Conservation, yes. Yeah, so spell conservation, like you could see, I was out of all of the critical spell slots, right? Fast, temper, level, uh, level two on the red mage. Uh, I did burn one extra. I should have used one more life cast on the ninja instead of on the red mage, but yeah. Lots of very, very tight decisions um, that end up working. And I really do want to emphasize that this is... This, this week is designed to be, in many ways, the difficulty spike. Like, we're giving you lots of tools. You have two blessings and things like that, but you have two force classes. And honestly, I ended up with two of the tougher ones, I think, for this flag set in terms of, you know, Thief Black Belt. Like, Thief White Mage would also potentially be a little chip tricky. Thief Thief would probably be the dead worst case. But, you know, dealing with that, higher encounter rates, unrunnables, um, all, all sorts of stuff is going on here, right? So, and it, EXP is way down. I had to work hard for my levels. So those those things are all things that, to keep in mind. Be kind to yourself. Make sure you're preparing properly. And, and also, for, to your point, Dead Pulse, if I was going to go with a Thief to level 40, I might as well have just done the Black Belt instead, right? Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that I, I don't want to be overlooked is that the reason you were able to do Chofer at that level was because the Thief had life. Right. Absolutely. There was a lot of things that went right for that to happen, right? I had the guaranteed defense, Masa, Katana, three ribbons. Um, yeah. The Fiends weren't super nice, though. Like, I did see nuclear, nuke, nuke, right? Or two nuclears? I don't know. But... You saw one nuclear, two nukes. Yeah, one nuclear, two nukes. So, you know, not particularly kind. So all of the uh, ducklings out there, I don't want you thinking, oh, my thief hit level 28, I can I can go through this. There mm -hmm. there was a lot of things that had to happen for that to be accepted. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so I think with that, let's start wrapping things up here. So as we mentioned before, this is the Duckling Bootcamp. Um, I'm Jat, joined in the booth here by Dead Pulse. I want to thank Derek Moon for restreaming and Danny for tracking tonight. Um, if you're interested in this flag set, we will be launching the Duckling Weekly tomorrow morning. Our Duckling Don, Gregly Puff, will be putting that up for all of you to run. If you haven't yet submitted the current Duckling Weekly, you have until early tomorrow morning uh, to get that in. Um, the, duck the Duckling Derby signups are now officially open, and you can check that out on our Discord. So definitely sign up if you are at all interested. It's a great time. I would highly recommend it to anyone. And uh, yeah, anything else that you want to say, Dead Pulse, before we wrap things up? Thank you, Jad, for pulling double duty here. And uh, thanks to Danny and Dark Moon behind the scenes. This was, uh, I think this is going to be a great week to kind of test everything that the Ducklings have learned over the past five weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, with that, I hope you all have a good night. And uh, I want to pass it over to uh, Dark Moon to get us out of here. If you like what you saw tonight and want to see more, we invite you to come check out the Randomizer and all the great stuff going on in our community. Go to FinalFantasyRandomizer.com. You can find the links to the Discord and the Development Discord right there, along with, of course, the Randomizer itself. Check out all the great flags, see everything we have on offer. Still two weeks to go, two and a half weeks, really, for this Duckling Bootcamp. The Async will be posted tomorrow for this Duck Seed. And then we will have the extra credit coming up on Thursday on the Final Fantasy Randomizer channel, which this week you're at right now. Uh, that will be 7 o'clock. We've moved the time to 7 so that uh, we can accommodate the weekly races that are starting back up. So weekly race will happen at 7, 
and then we will have the uh my brain just locked up for a second there. Think, uh, yeah, the well, the the uh, the extra credit will be at seven, and then the weekly race itself will be at ten thirty for those of you that want to participate in both and see the extra credit and then race the race. After, as well as that, we have two more weeks coming up after that, and then of course the Duckling Derby itself. And we do hope you come and check it out. If you haven't already joined and want to be a new player in our Derby, please do so. We invite you to come, practice, join the community, be a duckling, and have fun with all of that. It's a great community, and we want you to be a part of it. From all of us here in the booth and the rest of the Final Fantasy Randomizer community, I want to thank you for watching. We will hopefully see you here on Thursday at 7 o'clock for the Extra Credit Race. And enjoy your evening.